Hey everybody, my name is Tyler Bryan. I'm super excited today to, to chat about custom product pages. I've got a great set of panelists here who are gonna help us um, answer some, some really top questions that we wanna know about um, with regards to the, the different strategies uh, for generating you know, breakout growth um, with regards to the CPP. Um, as I mentioned before, my name is Tyler Bryan. Um, I have actually only been with Metrics for a month now, so I'm a, a newbie here, but super excited to um, be a part of this. And um, as a quick introduction, um, I recently came from Branch Metrics, uh, one of the MMPs that partners with a lot of um, ASA uh, products. And I'm just really excited uh, to A, learn more about the ASA side of things, uh, but more specifically the CPP. Um, one thing I wanted to ask my panelists, and also I'll answer this myself, is what is one of your um, most favorite places to vacation um, as a nice little icebreaker as well. So for me, it has been uh, Dubrovnik, Croatia, just being on the Mediterranean, um, you know, the seafood, uh, the weather, it was just fantastic. So that's an introduction for me. Um, Simon, how about you go first and, and a quick introduction about yourself? Sure. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Simon. Uh, I work at AppTweak, which is an uh, app store optimization tool, uh, helping personally uh, some of our enterprise clients uh, with ASO strategies, uh, as we also offer uh, a consultancy to some of our clients. Um, and when it comes to vacation, uh, my last destination was uh, Ljubljana, so Slovenia, which uh, is absolutely gorgeous. So uh, definitely recommend if uh, people are looking for nice, uh, slightly underrated destinations in Europe right now. I'm taking down notes as we go. Thank you so much, Simon. Um, how about Artyom? How about you next? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Artem Tkachuk. I'm a ASO expert at uh, a suggest company. Uh, basically, the main thing I'm doing with ASO Desk, I'm a senior lecturer at uh, ASO course at ASO Desk Academy. So uh, during my career at ASO Desk, I prepared almost 500 uh, people to work in ASO. So this is thousands of home tasks, uh, dozens of hours. So I think even in this uh, conference, there are lots of uh, my ex-students. So hello, everyone, <laughs> if you passed uh, my, uh, my ASO course. So, uh, and on, on a daily basis, I'm working with taxi applications uh, worldwide. And uh, yeah, we have like uh, more than uh, 200 applications in, in very, very rare countries in Africa, in Southeast Asia, in Latin America. And uh, that's my ASA job. Hi. Awesome. Great to meet you. Uh, and then last but not least, Max, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello there. Hi all. Nice to see you here. So uh, my name is Maxim, and uh, I'm user acquisition team lead at Splitmetrics uh, Agency. I'm a marketeer with uh, more than 13 years of successful marketing experience, including uh, five years uh, of experience in the gaming industry and more than four years of experience in the mobile app industry. And um, I'm, glad, I'm glad to be here today, and I'm happy to um, share my knowledge, my experience with you. Uh, and if you have any question, do not hesitate to ask us in the chat if you have ones. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so without further ado, let's get into some of the questions regarding CPP. I think that's why we're all here. I think that's why um, uh, I, I want to learn more. So um, first question. For a long time, publishers and marketers have been facing the challenge of testing different value propositions, you know, with different content, you know, a set of screenshots, video previews, promotional text for their apps. You know, eventually we have this opportunity to make the most relevant paid ads for different audience segments with the introduction of iOS 15 and, and their CPP. Um, Simon, first question goes to you. Based on your experience, what do your customers test the most with, uh, most often with CPP? Um, I think it depends on the category, uh, to be honest, uh, but what I see is people are not like the first thing they want to do with CPP is not that much testing new things. It's just trying to improve uh, existing campaigns. 
Um, and so they're, they're mostly going to look at assets they already have. Uh, I think the first thing to do, even if you don't have a lot of bandwidth with um, like a, a design studio, uh, is to just also try rotating uh, the uh, screenshots you have based on the uh, ad leading to the um, to the CPP. Uh, because one of my favorite examples is uh, when lo looking at music streaming services, uh, having worked for one myself, uh, I'm very familiar with the fact that almost all of them have both music and podcasts. And so what's always super interesting is that whenever they're going to be doing search ads, um, the easy quick win would be to make sure that the podcast related screenshot they have somewhere in the gallery is put first at that time. Uh, because yeah, even, even if it feels obvious or even if you're convinced that people are aware, you already do music and podcasts, just making sure people who want podcasts see that first uh, always gives you an uplift in conversion. Yeah, I think we all, all agree that with regards to podcasts, everyone's leaning on those heavily right now. So it's really cool to see that um, that's an easy win for, for music streaming companies specifically. And, you know, Max... To, to rope you in here as a, as a UA team lead here at Splitmetrics, um, you might've seen a lot of CPP use cases while getting ready for the holiday season. Um, with your observation, you know, what's the most, what are the most popular ones that you're seeing as we, as we lead into the holiday season? Okay, well, it's true. I do have some experience with the custom product pages uh, as we create a lot of them for every month for uh, our clients. And, um, uh, I'd like to compliment Simon here. Uh, we have a lot of dimension to test. Uh, I mean, user behavior uh, and needs, which can change rapidly uh, depending on the seasonality as well. Um, I don't know, custom product pages are a great tool to A-B test, uh, A-B test, um, test your seasonal screenshots or scheduled events um, before you the global rollout. And of course, you can, um, I don't know, you can expand your target audience by hooking new users. Um, new users like, for example, people who have never played any musical instruments, but suddenly wanted to learn playing jingle bells on the piano. <laughs> it's my own case, to be on uh, my own case, to be honest. Um, or football fans who search a lot of info about the World Cup. Um, so yes, custom product page is dedicated to Christmas or uh, World Cup or Qatar 2022 now are the mm, most popular cases for testing. Um, that's all from my side, I think, yes. Okay, yeah, I think um, as a massive football fan, I'm super excited for the World Cup to start and uh, that's super exciting. Um, and Artemo, to bring you in on this, um, you know, what is the most common CPP use case based on your experience? You know. Perhaps you can share with us, you know, any interesting case study or, or real world example that you've come across. No. Uh, yeah, I'll stick maybe to some real cases which we were conducting because uh, we know uh, like there is a lot of theory on Google, but uh, the real cases are the most interesting part. So I remember when we were optimizing an application for, uh, for the remote control of Android uh, uh, devices or Android um, um, uh, Android, yeah, Android devices like TV or any other. So one of the cohorts we were interested in, uh, it was a Xiaomi device controller, well-known brand Xiaomi. So there is a cohort of keywords for uh, devices for controlling Xiaomi devices, yeah. Uh, controllers for uh, uh, Xiaomi devices. So we created uh, CPP visuals that correspond with uh, Xiaomi brand. So primarily in terms of color, in terms of fonts, uh, this made uh, user, like our hypothesis was that this will make uh, users who are looking for uh, Xiaomi controllers like to, feel better with our visuals and understand that our application is uh, applicable for uh, Xiaomi devices. And uh, our approach worked well by using Xiaomi, again, colors, uh, fonts, and using exact match uh, search term, uh, remote control for Xiaomi camera on the visual, 
we improved our top through rate by 7%. So like uh, a general, I think a lot of uh, uh, marketing practitioners are doing this and uh, the real case from our practice and worked well. Awesome. Thank you for your input. Um, <clears throat> now that we've gone through the user case testing, um, let's dive into more of an audience-based testing for CPP. Um, this question goes to Max. You know, let's discuss each of these use cases briefly. You know, so what approaches to testing audience uh, segments using CPP would you recommend for gaming and then also non-gaming apps? Uh, okay, Tyler, thank you for this question. <clears throat> you know, we usually stick to a communicative strategy approach and focus on the five uh, Ws. Uh, creating hypotheses uh, who what when where and why and uh, this helps us to uh, help us understand uh, who our user is what we offer him when and where we communicate him i mean placement and geo and of course why he is to believe us to find the answer to this question uh, we do uh, research study the uh, key features and functionality analyze competitors uh, semantic cores and so on and uh, if you're talking about games, uh, we can use different uh, approaches to divide players into segment segments. Um, for example, battles model for segmentation MMO players um, by um, psychological, psycholo psychological types like socializers, explorers, achievers, killer, uh, etc. Each type of the gamers um, has their own specific needs, uh, their own specific goals they pursue. And you can prepare a separate message via custom product page for each of these uh, segments and then test them, just test. Um, that's based on my experience. Uh, Simon, Artem, if you would like to share your thoughts, the floor is all of you. Thank you. Yeah. Simon, why don't you, why don't you step in and, and as it relates to uh, 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 audience testing, um, some of your thoughts on that. Yeah, so I, I think in here there's like several um, additional things you could you could look at uh, when it comes to uh, identifying segments that you want to test. I think one thing is just to look at your product metrics and like, and like look for behavioral data, see what people prefer. Um, could it even be if if you want like also if you want the impact of your CPP not necessarily to be straight on downloads, but more on uh, downstream metrics like uh, revenue, look at what is the feature that usually breaks uh, the, like makes a cut between users who will stay on uh, three, on the three tier forever and those who actually convert to become paid. And you, you can build CPPs around more than one goal uh, as, as a result of that. Um, you could also think more in terms of what are the needs of the user? Uh, are there different reasons to use a product? Um, are there also different um, uh, value propositions? And here I, I can actually share uh, an example I've had with uh, a client where uh, we actually went really full circle in ASO and ASA with CPPs because we started just... Um, review like diving into the reviews of our clients and we actually found that one mention was about um benefits that were offered to three users for our clients uh and that others would actually have their users pay for so we decided to build a cpp around it and then use that cpp for the uh, con uh asa conquest campaign so targeting the competitors uh, by showing how our client had this additional benefit. And what we've seen was that the, the conversion rate nearly doubled as a result. I'll be honest, it wasn't a super impressive conversion rate because usually when you target competitors, it's, it's one of the toughest nuts to crack, but it still made a really significant improvement. And um, some projections we've made uh, shows that for the amount of users uh, they've eventually gotten from the campaign, uh, we saved 40 person budget thanks to the CPP. So that felt like a really good win. And, and that's where I would say it's really also important to know that when you're thinking about what CPP to build, sometimes you don't realize, but users are telling you already just if you look at the uh, user reviews. 
Yeah, it's awesome to see audience testing that incremental growth or, or an increase um, in any aspect. So it's awesome to hear that. Um, our team would love to bring you in on this as well. I'd, I'd love to hear more of your advice on audience testing. Um, you know, how, how do you usually approach this function? Well, there is a lot of things might be said about uh, using CPP as uh, uh, audience testing. Uh, maybe I would uh, underline at this moment about different verticals and audiences for each vertical. So let's have, uh, say we have an application for uh, online yoga lessons uh, and online Pilates lessons and online dancing lessons. I think this is pretty common, uh, like a few, uh, um, a few kind of services and this fitness and uh, uh, health opportunities in one application. And that's a few cases we had at ASO desk with this kind of application. So we can create a few um, custom product pages for each uh, of the verticals uh, and each of the verticals has its uh, different audiences or one audiences so when when um, uh, targeting uh, these different audiences in different verticals we find the best visuals which correspond with uh, with audience from this vertical and uh, this helps a lot in, in terms of uh, uh, of the most appropriate hierarchy of features and possibilities of our application for each vertical and audience we are we are targeting. So with with such a huge amount of possible uh, custom product pages, we can create uh, we can uh, test at the same moment uh, a lot of uh, uh, hypotheses for each vertical and uh, audience in this vertical. Uh, um, maybe this uh, what I would say. No, that makes sense. And you know, going hand in hand with you know audience testing um, on these on these creative pages is the actual creative that we're putting on there. Um, so, you know, good user acquisition journeys lead to good conversion, obviously. So let's talk a bit more about the creative and product visual pages um, and assets that we're testing. Um, Simon, would love to start off with you here. Um, what is your advice on approaching creative testing? You know, where is, there, where is it better to start this process on, on how to decide on what to test? Um, so I, I, in here, I really take it just like regular A-B testing. And, and I always insist the first thing is uh, coming up with a strong hypothesis. And if you have a strong hypothesis, then you know that you always get learnings out of it. So even if you don't get an improved conversion rate that, I mean, if it was so easy to improve the conversion rate, we wouldn't need testing all the time. So you have to, you have to know that, yeah, failing is part of the process, but if you learn from both failures and successes and actually you're just going to grind through what will lead to the best conversion uh, improvement that is available to you. Um, so that for me would be the first thing to do. And then it's about, I would say, being smart in where to find which hypothesis to prioritize. And, and that's where the example with mining reviews is great, but you could also look just at um, if you're thinking of, of running um, CPP uh, around certain features, uh, maybe these are features people search for. And then just looking at uh, ASO data, like the volume of uh, the search volume for each feature can also help you understand what people uh, most mostly care about. Uh, so that would be, I think, my, my two uh, pieces of advice here. Yeah, I think willing to to fail in order to understand what works, I think is such a great takeaway there. Um, Max, we'd love to have you come in and and would love to understand, you know, how you usually approach creatives and product page and visual assets, you know, testing while working with various clients. So how, how are we testing those those visuals and um, how has it been working so far? Okay, um, I would say that we use the same approach um, as um, Simon mentioned, um, we always start with a hypothesis when we understand the customer goals and this, uh, desirable KPIs. Uh, we create a hypothesis and um, produce a custom product page and run a test. We do not create a custom product page for sake of having a custom product page. 
our goals vary from clients to clients. Uh, I can say the most um, I can say the most common clients requests are top through rate or conversion rate increase or expanding the, uh, expanding the audience. And then we uh, try to understand how uh, our custom product product page pages uh, work uh, in this way. So I think that's uh, all um, I have to say. Yeah. That makes sense. No, thank you for your input. Uh, and then last but not least, Archim, um, what do you, I feel like I asked you this question on, on the last three questions, but what are your thoughts on this? You know, like uh, what are some real world examples that inspire or motivate um, your audience with regards to creative? Mm -hmm. um, perhaps I would add a few words to uh, what Simon yeah. said about uh, uh, importance of uh, hypotheses. Uh, uh, when um, when I'm talking with my students about uh, hypothesization and how to create hypotheses, how to run uh, A-B tests properly, I always underline for them, please be clear and detailed. So uh, we do not target the same audience with totally different creatives because uh, basically, as Simon said, this doesn't give us any learning. So uh i normally i teach the students like please uh, create kind of a basic uh, set of screenshots and basic set of details you you show on the screenshots and then just replace uh, one detail on the screenshots which should correspond to an audience to uh, to to any other things we would like to target so uh, like we choose the the skin color of a person or car color or change the header of the screenshots only or location on the map so uh, please create the basic set of details and, and basic screenshot and work with 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 these creative visuals uh, cr and uh, like create hypotheses and change details uh, like as per this hypothesis and only this give you a proper uh, learning uh, and uh, analytics will be valid just in these cases yeah i think accuracy in in data and making sure that we're reaching the right people at the same time with, with different creative is the only way we're going to get the right data. So I think that makes a ton of sense. So um, as we wrap up here, I want to say thank you again to Simon, Max, and RTM. Um, we appreciate all of your answers and your insights. Um, it has been really helpful for everyone here, and especially me.